Alright, maybe I should grab the attention of the dog. Or I should try to. I always like to try to not let the butcher destroy that table. But we'll see. I just want to get the dog first. Come here, you. Yeah, I figured that would pull him. Her. It? Uh oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. God, that was scary. I did. I kind of lost track of the butcher. And they make a scary noise. Like, the setup I'm wearing right now is, it's, it's almost, I've, I've just been trying to perfect my setup over the years, and this is kind of an okay setup, but I have a, an earbud plugged in so I can hear the audio, but I usually like to play with the audio. I don't really like wearing headphones for audio. It's like, it's okay. It's good to when you wanted to be, well, everything kind of went wrong there, wanting to be immersive, but it, it feels kind of uh, like, almost a little um, awkward or disjointed. I'm not sure. Oh, cool. The table's intact. Awesome table. Actually, this is like the most Bloodborne-ish area in the whole game. Maybe that's one of the reasons I like it so much. The aesthetic of Bloodborne is one of the most drawing things to me about that game. And the, aesthetic, the aesthetics and atmosphere of the depths is... I don't know. I really, really like the painted world overall. But especially for the, if we're just talking aesthetics, the painted world is probably my favorite. I almost like the Duke Archives, but it's kind of boring. It's almost like they copy and paste the same... Like, they made one or two cool bookshelves and one or two cool, like, walls that would go in, like, a ancient magical artifact library, and then they kind of copy and pasted it. And I know that you could say that about a lot of areas in here, but something about here just feels very, um, like, lower level. Which I like. Even the, the cooking pots over here, it, it tells a story. A lot of the earlier areas in the game, though, are more flushed out. They had more time to... Oh my god! to go over it. And it kind of shows. That's usually the case with almost all games, I think. I can't think of anywhere in a game where, well, so maybe some of the later areas, if they were made first, might be. Kind of like how they sometimes shoot the ending of a movie first. I, I, I always feel that way when I'm, not that I do it often, when I'm writing stuff or creating things, I always want to kind of jump to the end. Usually it's actually more because after I've done something, like I just, I just, I have a cover for my vehicle, uh, for various reasons, but where I live in the winter, uh, it gets, we get tons of snow. It gets well, well below freezing. We get every type of snow, bad snowstorms, heavy snow, tons of snow, inches and inches of snow. It's great. I don't love it. But, um, the regular cover I have is good for basically any other type of weather except like snow, and snow can get on it, and then it can melt, and then it can freeze, and it kind of messes with the cover. So I got a uh, weatherproof tarp that is excellent, and I cut it so it could go over the cover that I have for the vehicle. And I just uh, stitched in... It actually was like a process. I wasn't sure I wanted to do it. And I'm sure this is riveting for someone who is watching me dodge this guy very carefully. Her, it, she, him. And tell a story about how I put a cover on my vehicle. But this does have a point that I lost somewhere along the line of how I started... Wasn't sure how I wanted to do it. I knew I wanted to put a strap underneath it so the cover wouldn't blow off. So I started by kind of lining it up. I had a strap that goes into a buckle. I hot glued the buck the strap to the buckles around, cut the strap in half so they could clip into each other. Then I uh, sewed the spot on the tarp where I'd want it to go because nothing else would stick onto this tarp. And then after that, I had sewed it. I uh, used some solid duct tape, which surprisingly went really well on it, and uh, it held in there really well. Um, but it would have, it wasn't as perfect as it could have been, I suppose, and if I did it again now, doing it the second time, which is, you know, just anything with experience, it would come out much nicer, and I could do it twice as fast because I'd know what I was already doing. I didn't have to do guesswork, or, um, you know, maybe I tried to stitch something one way, and then I realized, oh, if I'd done it this way, it would have, not only would have looked better, but it would have been easier, or just, oh, it would have worked out better. And that's what, uh, that's what experience does, and it's... The difference between if I could just hop to the end and see, oh, this is how it would come out if I did it this way. Let's not do it this way. Let's alter it slightly. Which is actually just, I actually have done, you'd be surprised, but, or maybe you wouldn't. I don't know. I, there's a lot of different skills I'd like to learn, and one of the things I've been doing more is sewing. Specifically out of more of a need than a desire, sewing pants that have ripped. Um, but the, you can really tell, like, I have a couple pairs of pants that I have, and they've all ripped in the same spots, just because they're all the same pair of pants, and they all rip the same way. Um, but if you looked at the first pair I sewed, like, a year ago, to the pair that I just finished sewing, like, two hours ago, you would notice a distinct difference in quality. 
I just I've just gotten better, and it's it's cool to see that uh, progression of getting better at something like that. Which could be the, said the same about Dark Souls, maybe. 100 hours of this. What is it? Isn't it like... Uh, uh, I forget what it is. It's something like... I don't even remember. I'm going to misquote it. But let's just say 200 hours of whatever makes you a, a master at it. That's not the case. Isn't it like 1,000 hours? I feel like it's a round number. I can't remember. That's not you know, that's not necessarily true. But I guess the, the thought is... You could potentially reach um, mastering that skill. What is that? Is that a... Is he usually over there? I was like... I was like I thought there were only dogs and stuff when I saw the ghouls standing over there. And I guess those guys aren't ghouls, they're hollows. Because um, ghouls are like one level down in the depths, or the blight town. I think those guys are actually officially ghouls. Which I'm not even sure what the mythology definition of a ghoul would be. I feel like there's a few definitions of things that people like throw out terms like uh, goblin is one that I think is pretty traversal, especially like troll. Like, what, what makes a, an, a creature a troll? Like, if I said vampire to someone, well, I guess that's kind of debatable, depending on what you want to call it, too. But I think most people could agree, a vampire, um, one of the root core mythology pieces of a vampire that makes something, a creature, a vampire, is its need or want for blood. Usually a want. Um, or usually a need, I should say. It's usually a necessity. It needs blood for some reason. To survive, or to change people, or whatever. They usually need blood. Typically human blood. Um, that's usually the lore of a vampire. So I wonder what makes a ghoul a ghoul. I should actually probably look that up. Or anything, really. Because I have my own personal definitions, and I'm sure everyone does too, and sometimes they don't always match, especially when we're talking about mythological creatures. It's one thing... Oh, cool, I got humanity. Was that the first humanity I've gotten all game? I feel like it is. Right, well, as soon as I get to the bonfire, I'll human up. I'd love to do it more often, but I'm... Until I'm confident, I'll die less. Is there an ambush? Okay, I couldn't remember. Hey. <laughs> like, I don't know. This is funny. Oh, I just realized we never saved, uh... What's his name? Back upstairs. Well, we'll have to backtrack. Does he get out himself? I think he got out when I killed Capra. Which, this guy doesn't get out, right? Like, if you don't do this, he won't get out. Even if you kill the gaping dragon. That's interesting. I think, I think Griggs is his name, right? Yeah, Griggs. I think he got out. Yes, you are. You give me something here, do I have to see you later? I think I gotta see him later. Yeah, I gotta see him later. Because I will uh, gladly take the Pyromancy Flame. That would be helpful in this playthrough. There's a good chance I'm gonna be using... Um... Should I? Yeah, I'm probably gonna use Power Within. Some people call it OP. I don't know if I consider it OP. I guess it is, it can be. But I could use all the OP I'm gonna need, or I'm gonna get. Want? Blood. I don't know. Dodge! Alright. I'd also, I'd really like to get some uh, some faith for healing. I, I kind of just want to get my faith up just high enough just so I can heal. And I want to get my intelligence high enough just so I can uh, use things like oral uh, decoy. Honestly, I think we're just going to have a fun playthrough like that where I'm going to have a few tricks up my sleeve. I'm just going to be using tricks, no direct attack. So, this playthrough is going to start out slow with me, di with me almost dying and then making a miraculous comeback. Alright. And I don't want him to kill... I can't think of his name either. This game's got a decent amount of... Alright. Decent amount of characters. All right, let's just backtrack a little bit. I know, I know. This game's going to be... Uh, this early part, the first, you know, 20 parts, this is going to be like this. But once I uh, I get some tricks going, like like what I just said, and everything, it'll be... Uh, I don't know, much more enjoyable to watch. It'll be more enjoyable for me to play. I'll have more to play with um, without breaking the rules of the playthrough. Because there's a lot of uh, spells and pyromancy. It's, it's actually, I've always wanted to do a build where you just had a little bit of everything. And this is probably going to actually culminate to that. A little bit of faith. A little bit of a... Uh, I'm guessing I'm going to need attunement slots too. I just thought about that. Because I was thinking it would be easy to level up some intelligence to like, I don't know, 16 maybe? Faith to like 12? Well, I don't know. Maybe a little bit higher than that. I guess it'll be based on more of my need. Like if I have a spell that has a certain level and I want to get to that, I will. I love how I just spent a considerable amount of time fighting Capra to learn Capra's style. And I beat, you know, a tricky, tricky boss like Capra. But now I'm having trouble with this her, it, she, him, she. Alright. Oh, too early. That stings. Ouch. Oh, okay, well, I guess on the bright side of dying, look who's here. 
No, I don't. He's always the he's the he's the owl from Ocarina of Time. He's that guy, which I appreciate. It keeps you on your toes because most players would just hit yes, and you're like, oh, I messed up. I like that it does do that, even though it's it's like kind of like uh, I hit, like on the borderline of douchey, but it's it is uh, I do appreciate it. It's something I would do. Excellent. Okay, and then I don't have any souls on me. See, I can't use the fire orb combustion out of the question, but iron flesh. Flash Sweat, those would be useful. They aren't really what I want in mind right now. Iron, uh, I don't think that would be good. I can't think of a particular enemy at the moment that that would be really useful. For. Perfect. All right. Yep, let's just throw one into Faith because I, I totally forgot I actually had an attunement slot already. So I could have done doing this a while. Uh, that actually wouldn't help me against a boss like Capra really, but it would help me where I'm going right now between the Depths and Blight Town. All right, let's attune that real quick. There we go. Perfect. Okay, well, you can tell I'm already taking full advantage of heal, and I'm going to take full advantage of this, too. Because now that I've already been through this area once, I feel completely justified in using a shortcut like that. I suspect if I was doing that and really being aggressive and cheesing the game and building up a lot of stuff and grinding, I could get through this pretty quick, but I just don't think that'd be any fun. Or maybe it would. What do I know? Alright, you. And the best part about this now that I... Because I completely forgot I had a attunement slot I could be using the whole time. I, it's actually really, I really could have been using heal for the last, you know, good good couple hours of gameplay. Really would have been helpful on not directly on bosses, but in these situations where I don't need to necessarily use a quick Estus. Yikes! I wasn't ready for that. Talking about quick Estus, I did not think that Hollow would jump down. I don't remember these guys being this hard. I know I'm doing not a lot of damage, but I, I guess I'm just being too trebulent around them is the problem. Anytime I'm seeing a new enemy I'm not used to killing in a few hits, it's like, oh, I'll be careful and cautious, and that's quick as you killed. I'm going to drink this, because I'm not going to die again. It's not happening. You know, in hindsight, too, I've, I've had a death counter going. I haven't made mention of it. It was something I decided to do in editing. I'm like, oh, this will be a good idea. This will be fun to see my however many deaths it will be, and I've now realized that this was a terrible idea. Because when I only have to put in uh, one or two death counters per episode, it's not so bad. When I fight something like Capra and I die <laughs> five or six times an episode, it starts to get a little much. It's like, alright, well, maybe this is a bad idea. But I've uh, I've committed now and I don't want to back out. Where are you going? I think I can sneak up on her? I wonder. Is the enemy, like, active right now? What does the AI think it's doing? What do you think it thinks it's doing? Oh, yes. That's not great critical damage. I thought that would be a little better. Ouch! I do want the sack, though. Arguably, one of the best items in the game. Does go with everything, technically. There we go. That's the move I needed. Yeah, that's not fantastic critical damage. I actually would expect a little better. And I'm pretty sure you can't parry these guys. I don't think you can parry the uh, that. I think that's actually unparryable even if a player was to do that. Which is cool. There's only like a handful of unparryable moves in the game, I think. Via a player, that is. I'm also shocked that the Grass Crush shield isn't giving me more stamina back. I was actually thinking about going to get the Chlorothin G ring later, but I don't think we're going to do that. I just don't think it's worth the uh, the time. Maybe if I decide to make a suicide run. Oh, yes, the sack. Now, the sack, there's no way it's better than the uh, Gargoyle Helm, which was a pretty rare drop to get. I usually don't get that. I get it on occasion, but not that often. There's only a few items I've never gotten. I've never gotten the Ghost Blade, like the, the rare drop one, not the not the Jagged. And there's a few other things I never get. I don't can't think of them off the top of my head, but I don't. There's a few things that I just never get. Yeah. Alright. Okay, see, I should have brought firebombs for these guys. These guys are going to be a pain. Oh, God. Give me that. Get me out of there. These guys kind of remind me of, like, like likes from Zelda. Closest thing I can think of. Oh, it's not... I guess that damage could be worse, but it's not really worth killing them. I guess they can drop shards. Yeah, it could be worse. I imagine blunt weapon. 
blunt weapons could do more damage, but yikes. If I could just get to this bonfire without dying, we could we could call that a good episode, couldn't we? I think we could all agree that's decent. Yeah. Okay, cool. I can probably unequip that too. Yeah, uh yeah, we're gonna make it. I probably don't need to heal, probably. Nah, we're good, right? For some reason I thought the guy was over. I don't know. I'm jumpy. There it is. Oh, and I don't have the key. Oh, I don't have the key. Uh I know where it is. I remember. I just can't. I just like I just thought to myself, I don't have the key. Alright, get off the ceiling. Nope, wrong target. I don't have the master key, do I? I'm pretty sure I don't have the master key. I do. Oh, okay. Did I pick the master key? I can't. Or whatever. I'm. Yeah, I'm not gonna question it. If life hands me a chocolate chip cookie, I'm just like, hey, chocolate chip cookie. I like those. And bonfires. Bonfires are good too. Oh, thank goodness. 